who's uh, tuned in from the UK. And as Dr. Basundi said, good afternoon to uh, all our Thai based participants. And uh, welcome everybody to our the third of our Talking Thailand talks with, with 30 people signed up today. If, if, if we have 30 people, um, it's, it's, it's certainly growing in popularity. But today's talk of how we combat COVID-19 in Thailand is, is clearly of interest to all of us. And uh, as, as we strive to find a, a global solution to the epidemic, and will be given by Dr. Basanti Chong Trakul, who is, is a distinguished doctor. And for those who haven't read his bio or, or the, the, the bio that Andrew put around, is an assistant professor in the the Faculty of Medicine at Chulalongkorn University, a member of the Thai Board of Pediatrics. He's a fellow of the International Task Force on Priority Health Problems at the Faculty of Health Science at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada, and an expert in rational drug use and advisor to the Thai Ministry of Public Health. He also features regularly on the Thai radio and TV shows. So he's, he's abundantly well-placed to, to, to tell us today how Thailand has handled the pandemic. That's something which for those of those who are on the call today, who were on the last Thailand talk two weeks ago, was something that the British yeah. ambassador, Brian yeah. Davison covered yeah. and uh, yeah. made, made it quite clear how well uh, Thailand had, uh, had handled the, the, the pandemic so far. In his, in his talk, he will be uh, drawing comparisons to other countries, including the UK, approaches to the pandemic and, and it'll be interesting to, 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 to see the, the various comparisons. From my own perspective, I'm particularly interested to know when Thailand plans to reopen its borders to the rest of the world because as we're currently experiencing here in the UK, coming out of the lockdown presents a delicate balance of getting the economy back underway and preventing a second wave of the virus. It's certainly not an easy task but it's an essential one for all of our future prosperity and well-being. So it'll be interesting to sort of hear both sides, how, how Thailand's uh, coped and, and coped very well with the pandemic and where how it's going to plan to come, come out and open itself up back to the world. As for the talk itself, Dr. Basanti has is, is put together a very interesting collection of slides to which he will talk um, as, he, as he's going, 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 going through his, uh, his speech. And... Uh, He'll do, probably do so for around 45 minutes, something like that, 45, 50 minutes, after which there'll be about 10 minutes of uh, questions and answers. And uh, um, again, most of us on the call who are already on the previous call will understand how to go about that. But Charlie will also just explain for anybody who, 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 who is, isn't quite clear about that, how we go about it. But that's, that's enough from me on the introduction. Thanks very much again to Dr. Basanti for giving up his time we're very much looking to what he has to say, and I hope everybody enjoys what promises to be a, yet another very interesting talk. Thank you very much. So can I start now? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. And most of all, hello, Dr. John, were there. Without him, I wouldn't be able to give a speak to everyone here today. I'm going to share my slide now. Can you see? Okay, so next one, <clears throat> the next slide. This is a comparison between countries. You will see the graphic here. The green one are the countries that been said that this is winning the situation of this pandemic and the orange one is nearly there and <clears throat> the red one are the countries that need actions. Let's see which country are doing best or are winning. The green one on the top you can see Greece, New Zealand and Thailand. The, the orange one is Germany, Italy and France. On this slide, which last updated on the 4th of July, he said that United Kingdom was on the red zone that need action. But after 10 days, 
After this, you will see another slide that changed the situation. This is New York Times a few days ago. Been said that no one knows what Thailand is doing. Right? Doing right. But so far it's working. And it's cited in this article that there are three factors for our success. One is the culture. The second one is the genetics. And the third one is the face mask. I will give you 19 more today because I have listed about 22 of them. Next one. This is a comparison between UK figure and Thailand. For the total cases, UK has about, uh, this is uh, about a week ago, about nearly 300,000 cases in Thailand, just above 3,000. The number in red here, here, is uh, the amount that uh, UK has more than us, about 90 times as much. And about the total death, UK has about uh, 44,000, and Thailand has just 58, which is something like uh, 775 times as much. But I know that this death rate in uh, UK is reported uh, differently from other countries. Anything from the beginning that has COVID, and after that, they die for any cause they will count as COVID. So the real figure will be less than this number. This one is number one that I put into my slide. Let's see. I think we have a good system of contact tracing because we have more than 10,000 of a group of uh, epidemiological teams that can come to each individual that has contract the disease, and then we will get everyone into <coughs> uh, uh, testing or monitor them for 14 days. I will give you an example that just happened in Thailand. On the 8th of July, we had 31 flight crew member which are flying from Egypt. Usually they had to land in uh, Suwanakum Airport, but because of something happened that they couldn't land. So it's been directed to Utapau Rayong Pattaya Airport, which is an international one. After that, they went to stay in a Rayong hotel. Because of the lack of security at that hotel, because that one is not the designated hotel for crew member like this. So they allow the crew member to go out of the hotel, and all of them went to a shopping mall. One of them was a soldier. And oh, fortunately, on the first day that they arrived, we already test them using the PCR test as in the picture down here. And after that, one soldier was tested positive, one out of 31 crew member. Not all of them were soldier, but one of them was a soldier, and this soldier was tested positive. And the result came back on the 12th of July. So let's see what happened after that. This is the day that we hadn't have any new cases in Thailand for many, many days. When you say not having a case, it means the one that actually occurred in Thailand. But if you look at the number, we will have increasing number of patients every day, but those are all the patients that were in under quarantine. So what happened after we detect this one soldier who contract COVID-19 and went out of the hotel and mixed with other people in Thailand? This is what happened. Because of that contact tracing, people were asked to come and check. Every day they will come. And on the 15th of July, we already checked more than 1,000 people. We then have 1,882 people who volunteer for quarantine home, self-quarantine at home, without having to have any kind of uh, command or anything from the government. They just volunteer themselves. They said, oh, I think I have a, a risk, so I will quarantine myself. And the school, all of them 
has been closed. This is the number of tests that we ran from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, up to 6,000 people. And this is the latest number. The total number that we tested up to uh, the 20th of July, 6,780 people had been tested and all were negative. So this is one of the things that happened very recently and it's a test that whether we have a case of coronavirus in the community, then how we handle this situation that I'm going to tell you more can stop this uh, spreading of disease. Number two here. The BRA show said that uh, we had, we, we are having more than one million village health volunteer. This one is unique to Thailand. We have about one village health volunteer every 67 people in Thailand. They will conduct home visits, they provide health education, and they will deliver all the message from the Minister of Public Health to all the people in their responsibility, whether they should wash their hand, whether they should use the mask, whether they shouldn't make a social distancing, something like that. And who are these people? These people are just ordinary people, like the people you are seeing here. We call them also more in Thai, we call them also more. Also more is Asa Samak Muban, which is village health volunteer. This picture is my gardener. Her name is Tung. So this is one or so more. This is uh, the picture of her I took just this Saturday from our holiday home in Pak Chong, which is about two hours in Bangkok. So before she come to work at my home, early in the morning, she would do her or so more task. During this COVID-19, she will be at the school checking temperature of the students and in the evening she will do other things. So this is also more that has been praised from the world that because of this that we had these heroes that they helped stop spreading of this disease in Thailand. These are our doctors. Dealing the first few months of the spreading of the disease. They work very hard, not just doctors, everyone, nurses, pharmacists, everyone in the hospital. So this is a thing that people in Thailand see and they respect and they feel like they had to give back to the community of this uh, health personnel. That's why when we deliver this message out, on the left is Thai language and on the right is a translation. It said, I stay at work for you. Please stay at home for us. So nearly everyone in Thailand, when they had the lockdown, they stay at home. Only us, me and my wife, which is also a doctor, that travel from home to work because we work at the hospital. We have to go out every day. So I can see that the streets is empty and everything is under control. People are were willing to stay at home. This is a sad story about the disease that the most, one of the most vulnerable people who will contract this disease are the health personnel. The picture on the left are the 198 doctors pictures, small pictures of all those doctors, nurses, stretchers, bearers in Mexico who died because of COVID-19. They put every tiny pictures into a big picture. In the UK, this is uh, 100 NHS people who work and then died. One of the reasons is on the left side of the slide here. This is from the news saying that 
NHS staff have been washing and reusing the personal protection equipment, which is not the thing that we should do, but because of this lacking of this equipment that maybe we haven't prepared. No, no one prepared for this, even in Thailand. So at the first uh, stage of uh, this epidemic, we, we had a shortage of this also. But because we had so not so very many peop, uh, patients, that's why we still have enough for everyone. That's why we don't have a lot of uh, health personnel contract this disease, and we don't have one person of the personnel who died because of COVID-19 in Thailand. This one, 10 days after the first slide, you can see that United Kingdom have moved from red to orange now. So I am very happy to see that United Kingdom is moving toward this. And in no time, I am sure that you will be moving to the green. And then you can open your country for us to visit you, and we will open our country for you to visit us. I put this slide in to say that talking today is very important to me because I wish UK is going to do very well because I have a big stake there in London. This is Serene. Serene is my daughter. She is now in London. Serene likes to do the aerial in her free time, pole dancing. She is a vegetarian, and Celine's been studying in the UK since uh, 2010 at uh, St. Mary Ascot. And after that, she went to um, Imperial College and studied joint math and computer science. She is now finished her, uh, uh, finished the course. Before that, before this time that she had to go back to London, she went back to Thailand and stayed with us for many days, for, for several months. And now she is now coming back to England to stay with a friend, which is also a doctor. Her name is Ivonica. She lives in uh, Hearn Hill. When she, Celine came back to England, she had to stay in a quarantine during the 2nd and 16th of July. She is now free, and she went out now. The next picture is uh, Serene is showing off her hand standing in the garden of uh, my friend Ivonica. So both of us, me and my wife, we were praying that when Serene went back to London, the situation of COVID would be better and better because we don't want Serene to contract this disease. She was in Thailand. She was in a very safe place. And when going back, I was very worried whether people will <clears throat> uh, put on mask or not, whether if Serene put on her mask, she would be looking at someone who is doing something strange or not. The next thing that uh, put into perspective whether Thailand has so little cases. Actually, we were very vulnerable. Because Thailand is the first country in the world to report COVID-19, Thailand is one of the most popular destinations of Chinese people. We had millions of Chinese people coming to Thailand as a tourist. So the first case, the first case that uh, been report was the, this Chinese lady who was a tourist. And we detect that she was ill. She was put to a hospital in Nontaburi, close to Bangkok on the 8th of January. And after a few days, the test came back that she had COVID-19 positive. This is strange because COVID-19 is a new disease. Usually we, don't, we, we shouldn't be able to detect it. But because we have this scientist. This is Dr. Supaporn. Dr. Supaporn has been working with the genetic code of coronavirus for many, many years. And when she heard about the disease in China, and this Chinese tourist was ill, then she came up with the test that we know exactly at that time that she had COVID-19. So this is one of the reasons that we can detect the disease very quickly. 
The next slide, this is to let you know that she's been working with bats for a long, long time. Why do I have to talk about bats? Because bats are the primary source of coronavirus, a reservoir for coronavirus. And the coronavirus will jump to a certain species before jumping to human. 2003, it jumped to civet cat that we had the SARS-CoV, the first one. To camel, then we have MERS-CoV in 2012. And Pangolia, that we had this SARS-CoV in 20, uh, 2019. So the fifth reason that we can combat this disease in Thailand is that we have these facilities in Thailand. We call it the Emerging Infectious Disease Health Science Center, which belong to my faculty, the Faculty of Medicine, Jualangkorn Hospital, which is attached to the Thai Red Cross Society. So the, the abbreviation would be EIDTRC. And Dr. Supapon work at these facilities. This is the, the place that is one of the center that has been announced to check for uh, COVID-19. <clears throat> at first, <clears throat> we will check for two sites, one from Jhulalongkorn University and another one from the Ministry of Public Health to confirm each other. If we have positive from the two sites, then we will report the case. The other reason <clears throat> that we can uh, stop the spreading is that no one in Thailand has to have any money before they can have a test. Because the tests are for free, everyone who are eligible, <coughs> first, they have to have a history of contact. Let's say <coughs> I am a guy who are working with tourists, or I work in a market that has a lot of people coming at the press. So I am people at risk. Second, if I have a fever over 37.5, and the third, I have some symptoms, usually the respiratory symptoms, such as sneezing, cough, uh, having a sore throat, things like that. Then I am eligible for this test. So everyone in Thailand, they can go for a test, even though they don't have all of these criteria, they can go anyway, and there will be a screening whether they will be checked or not. Another thing is that when they've been checked positive for COVID-19, for the disease, then they will be hospitalized. Everyone with positive COVID-19 will be hospitalized in Thailand. And everything is for free. The room cost, the medication cost, everything, the test and everything will be free for, for as long as you stay at the hospital. So this is another reason that people can go and have the test and can go and have the treatment without having to think whether we have enough money or not to give the test or being hospitalized. This is from CDC, from America. This is the basic of not to contract any illness that spread through the respiratory tract, which is the usual basic stuff, like uh, try to stay away from people who are con who have the disease, covering your nose and mouth, and cleaning the things that we can touch together. But I put number eight here, that is putting on the face mask. CDC advised this very early in the beginning, but many people in the West, they do not comply. Usually they will think that only the people who are sick that should wear the mask, but this is not the case in Thailand. When you, you look here, if a people is infected with the, the virus, even you are, they are not coughing or sneezing, but they just speak, and you are close enough to them, the droplets and the aerosol <coughs> can spread from these people to you easily. Especially if they talk loudly or they sing, so if you protect yourself by putting the mask on, 
then the virus can penetrate the mask. Yes, yes or not? Yes, it can penetrate the mask. But the chance of having a lot of virus will be lessened. And the picture at the bottom saying that if the people who are having the disease, usually some of them will be asymptomatic. If they wear the mask also, then it will be preventing the spreading of the disease more effectively. If everyone, whether having the disease or not, or a healthy person, would wear this mask. So this is the thing that we adopt in Thailand. You can see even monks, they wear masks. And we have a figure here that the use of masks rose from 87% during May, in the middle of May, to 91.5% during the last week of May. I'm so glad that I heard about this, that in two days' time, everyone entering a shop in the UK has to wear a mask, or else they will be fine. In Thailand, we don't have a law, we don't have a fine, but everyone practice this anyway. This is a mask from Jim Thompson. If you fancy having one, you can order. Everyone that purchase for 390 baht, 100 baht, will be donating to my hospital, Jalalongkorn University. This is to say that uh, not just covering your face with anything, but it needs to be proper. The face mask should be a proper face mask, not just a uh, scarf like this, because scarf has too much holes in it. So scarf are the least effective. Don't use this, just use the face mask, the cloth mask. Number nine is about Thai culture. Thai culture that everyone knows, we tend not to touch other people while we are greeting each other. We don't hug, we don't kiss, we use the why like this. So it's good that other people in the West already adopt this to not contacting each other. And Prince Charles in the, in the top had already used this. But many people in the West, because they don't believe in this, you can see on the left side that the ambassador from the U.S. still insists on not wearing mask and insists on shaking hand with the deputy prime minister at that time. Oh, talking about Thai culture, we have some other things also. Besides the why like this, the Thai culture, we wash ourselves usually twice a day. We have a bath in the morning and in the evening. We take our shoes off when we enter our house and we are having a so-called uh, extended family. It means that we are having our elderly at home with us in a family. That's why we don't have a lot of nursing home in Thailand. We have some very few that people will allow the elderly to stay in the, in the nursing home. But in the UK, many of the people who died uh, were the people who stay in a nursing home because they were fragile, they're having a lot of morbidity, they have a lot of diseases, and they were quite old. That's why one of the reasons that UK has, uh, and other countries in the West, has a lot of uh, mortality. And we can wash our hands everywhere. Before you enter a cafeteria in a supermarket or in a mall, in a department store, they install a new place for you to wash your hands. Everywhere you go in Thailand, you will see this ABHR, which is... Uh, sorry, i try to expand this. This is alcohol-based hand rubbing everywhere in Thailand, easy to find and people are willing to be quarantined and they are respectful for social distancing. This is the window display I just took from Boots in Bangkok the other day. I'll, that will explain the point. 
Number 10 here is the thing that I already said about hand rubbing with alcohol. You, en you enter any places in Thailand, you will see this alcohol rubbing for you to use for free. Some place they will have a people who, who will spray it for, for you when you walk past them. And this is the thing when you enter, you will see this a QR code. This QR code is the apps, we call it Thai Chana. Thai Chana is mean Thailand is winning. That people has to scan it to, and it will send the location of you to the center that the people who look after this app will know where you've been to. And when you get out of any premises, then you scan it again. So they know the exact time frame that you are staying at this place at this time and you exiting it at this time. This is why we can ask people directly to come back for a test if you are uh, contacting any people who are suspecting of having the disease. And this is number eight about wearing mask. They will put this sign on to ask nicely for people to wear mask. And if they don't, it's possible that they won't give you any services. This is also another thing. They will put marks on the floor to let you stay not too close to another people. Usually more than one meter, best would be two meters. And they will put here, they say no more than seven people are allowed in this boots shop. That's the social distancing. If you want to do a quarantine in style, we have this kind of place for you to come. You can stay and you can check on the website for the cost that you want to stay. This is something like uh, six, 64,000 baht for 14 days, including meals. Number 14 is that we have to act quickly. So we've been pressed from many countries. This is the Australian ambassador, congratulate Thailand for efficiently curbing the spread. This is on May 8th of 2020. Number 15 is isolating the people who has the disease away from home. If you are having the disease, then we put you in a hospital. But if the hospital is full, and if you are having very few symptoms, then they will put you in a place that we call hospital. I already checked it in Google. They don't find any word according to hospital. Many months ago I checked. Hospital is a hotel. That, th this one is the hotel that my uh, hospital, Jula University Hospital, rented, contracting them that they are not allowed to accept any customers except the patients from our hospital. So we call them hospital. If you are not very sick, then they put you in a hotel like this, and doctors and nurses will come and visit you at this hospital. Number 16 is about the strict travel restriction that you already know about. Now, on the 26th of March, we act quickly about putting this emergency decree on. This emergency, emergency decree put a lot of power for the government to announce many, many things that the ordinary law cannot uh, do that. So they will say, do this, don't do that, and then finally they will shut down the country and not allowing people to come in or go out. And all, already, and also putting the curfew on. That's the uh, the emergency decree was about. This is a timeline that uh, has been announced. This is not because of the emergency decree. This is just the announcement from the Bangkok Authority. So this is just for Bangkok. But every province, when they see Bangkok is doing anything, they will adopt that. So you can see from the timeline, on March 18, we closed the massage parlor, bar sauna, fitness center, pubs and bars, and boxing stadium. I highlighted the pubs and bars and boxing stadium 
because we had incidents from pubs and bar and boxing stadium. Before March 18, we had very few cases per day, maybe less than 10. It's increased very slowly. But we had the incidents that they had this boxing, boxing uh, event. So thousands of people gathering at this boxing stadium. Although it had been said by the ministry cabinet that do not put this kind of event. They just asked, asked nicely at that time, but this group of people, they didn't listen. So they put people, thousands of them in the boxing stadium, and that's the beginning of our big wave of coming. That's why on the March 18, they closed all these eight premises. And then on the March 11, they announced more. 27, they announced more. Finally, they closed everything down. Except the thing that you had, you, you have to, to go to, like hospital. Number 17. This is about massive amount of testing. It's been said that Thailand, we had very little small amount of patients because we don't test, which is not true. On the here, this is not the test, but this is a screening. This is a number, the number of people that we screen at the airport, seaport, ground port, and at Jang Watana, which is another site of uh, foreigners that come to Thailand. And after screening, they will put some tests on those people, if necessary. So we don't put a test on everyone. We put on the one that is the target. And the face mask for everyone, that's it, number eight, that I already said. Number 18 is about continue to practice social distancing. Thailand still practicing this, although we had very few people, or not having any for many, many days. We are still practicing this social distancing. But it's become more laxing at the moment. It's not very strict as the, the first time. I will show you some slide. This is how we practice social distancing in Thailand. Sitting very far away, if you want to go to a restaurant. Sitting and waiting. We put a mark, an X, that you shouldn't sit there. Only one people will be allowed. Also on the bus, on the subway, in the lift. Motorcycle. In the UK, when Thai people saw these pictures, they would think, oh my god. Because in Thailand, they are quite afraid or scary of the disease. Unlike the people in the West, they are not scared at all. Even Dr. Fauci in uh, America had to make a plea saying that coronavirus is, COVID-19 is a viral infection. And he said that HIV is a viral infection. Herpes is a viral infection, something like that. It means that a viral infection can get to you and sometimes it stay with you for life, like HIV, also uh, the herpes. So this is the very early time that we just know about COVID-19. So everyone should be afraid that you don't want to have COVID. You don't want to have COVID-19. You don't want this SARS-CoV-2 in your body because we don't know the long-term effect that it will happen. So we don't think that, okay, let's make it through. We contract the disease and then it will go away and then we'll be fine. We shouldn't think like that. Number 18, this is very important. It is about be patient. Don't reopen too early. The picture on the right is the example that Hokkaido opened the city too early. And you can see the rising of the cases in Hokkaido and they had to shut it down again. So let's see how slowly we did in Thailand or we are doing in Thailand. May the 3rd is the first time that we relieved because the measure phase one. 
So we restore restaurant, we restore uh, the golf course, and outdoor indoor sporting. This is very really welcoming to me because since March, April, the whole month, although I can go out because I have to work, but I cannot do any sport. Tennis is my thing. So I was so happy that they allowed me to go back to the tennis court again. But the rules are very strict. They said you cannot play sports that is a group of people play together. So you just can play only single tennis at that time. At that time I thought this is nonsense. Playing tennis in a double, you stay very far away from one person. But anyway, they say just single can play. The only thing that welcomed me, this is me on one of the TV channel talking about COVID-19. You can see my hair, very, very long. So the first day that they lift up that we can go back to the barber, I was very pleased. This is after the measurement that they say you can go to the restaurant. Many restaurants has already been prepared for this. So they put more hygiene in how they do it. You can see the two person in the middle of the picture, the man and the lady. One person will be assigned for just the drinks, another person just for the food, another person for the utensil, something like that. They will have a screen and you can see the alcohol uh, rubbing on the table and they will wrap everything with in plastic. If you have a small uh, restaurant, then you put partition on and you put a space also in the restaurant. If you come to Thailand now, then you will see this. May the 17th, this is the relief measure phase two. People can go back to the department store. You can see that they are wearing masks here, here every one of them and this person what is he doing in the lift he will press the lift for you because they don't want you to touch the fomite that will make your finger dirty with virus at this time we have new cases equal to zero may 17 but if you look at everyday report like this one on the May the 1st, they will say here that we are having new six confirmed cases. But all of these are the people who are under quarantine inside a hospital. So outside the hospital, we don't have any new cases for many, many days. And they come from overseas, yes. All of these people are not Thai people who are staying in Thailand. They are Thai people who will be accepting them from coming back home. We have these people, let's say from Africa, from UK, Saudi Arabia, everywhere, Singapore, wherever. And then we put them in quarantine. And during that quarantine, we check them. So on the 26th of May, this is the first day of continuous zero case. The first day of continuous zero case in Thailand. That we don't have any cases. We can announce that this is the first day that we don't have any cases in Thailand. So you can see the number here. When I say seven days on the slide, it means this is seven days from the first day that we announced that we had zero cases. So this is the seventh day, and the relief measure phase three has been announced. We let people can do other things that we already shut down in the beginning. Theater, bowling, fitness, group dining can be done. June the 15th, this is the 37 days of not having any cases in Thailand. Relief measure phase four. July the 1st, we open our school and we open the pub massage parlor. The 3rd of July, we went to, me and my wife, Dr. Sunny, we went to a theater. We went to see this film, Tom Hanks, because a beautiful day in the neighborhood. 
and everything is in place. We had to scan in and out, and we were quite happy that we were the only two person in the theater, very empty. So it's quite safe to go to the theater. This is the 39 days that we don't have any cases. We call Taishana application. July the 11th, we have 14 new cases. This is to let you see that we have one from Bahrain, one from USA, 12 from Sudan. 47 days now. And these are the list of medicines used in Thailand. I put this one on because the way doctors prescribe medicine for COVID-19 is really different from Thailand and the UK. In the UK, anything has to be passed on the registration first that this has been accepted for use. But in Thailand, even though it hasn't been registered for COVID-19, but then we have a national guidelines allowing us to use all of this medicine very plumply for our patient in Thailand. We are not using every one of them. We use them uh, uh, according to the severity of the diseases. And we also have this one because of the Thai Red Cross. We ask people to come back and donate that, that plasma because plasma can be used to cure or can be used to help people at the very beginning of the disease. Also, we are making our own vaccine. Our vaccine is about to be tested in human. So we are behind the UK. UK has already been tested in human. But we are uh, in a good place that we may have a vaccine of our own, that we don't have to uh, pay a lot of money and we, we maybe we cannot compete with other countries like UK already pays a lot of money to secure 90 million doses of vaccine for the UK citizen. This is the last slide. It just happened today. It said how to prepare for the second wave of COVID-19. So these are the people who are talking today and now they are talking about this. So this is the second wave that we always tell the people in Thailand that be prepared. We will have the second wave. We will. We will have the second wave. So be prepared and not let your guard down. So this is the thing that we do in Thailand. The good side of having COVID-19. This is the rare pink dolphin that we spotted. Because when we lock down, no one can go to these places and nature came back. This is at my polo club that I play tennis with. In February, you can see the number 156. That's the amount of PM 2.5 in Bangkok on that day. And on the July, this, this July, it said zero. This is very good. When you look up at the sky in Thailand nowadays, you see really clear blue sky. At that time, it, the sky was not so clear. So this is one good thing. Because nature coming back, in Suratani, we saw this whale, chop whale coming back. Phuket, we had a lot of nest for leatherback turtles. We sight many fish. This is a school of um, chops, reef chop in Grumby. So this is all the slides that have been prepared. I've been happy, I would be happy for questions from, from you all. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Pisanti. Um, we uh, will now go to some questions. Um, so if anybody does have a question, um, please use the um, icon. If you go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see um, a button called participants. Um, and then next to your name, you should be able to click an icon that says raise hand. Um, and if you can do that, I will be able to see and I'll be able to unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, so we do have a question um, already from Quinton. So I'm going to unmute you, Quinton. Or well, you've done it yourself, yeah? I've done it myself. Well, I think uh, yeah. let uh, me be the one to have the honor of congratulating 
uh, Kun Moore, for a fantastically informative uh, presentation. And also to congratulate Thailand on its success. Um, I think you, you should add to your list um, the very high quality of the um, eminent uh, medical practitioners uh, in, in Thailand, uh, who clearly um, been listened to by the government. Uh, it's been a very good teamwork. Um, unfortunately, to be honest, we've got a lot to learn from Thailand and other countries uh, that have been um, more successful than us. Um, and I'm sure the British government will be looking back at that and drawing the lessons. But, you know, we, we are where we are, as people say. And hopefully things are getting better in the UK now. Um, my, one question I wasn't uh, entirely clear that you'd answered fully from my point of view, Given the huge success and the, the fact there has been no local transmission uh, and the risk therefore is very low in Thailand, I, I'm unclear why the state of emergency has been renewed to the end of, of August. Yes. Because yes, it's been that, renewed to, to the end of August, yes. You may, you may this, have to give a diplomatic answer, but uh, there are no, sorry, just to finish, it doesn't seem there's anything that is absolutely ne needed uh, from the state of emergency. The measures that are in place could be in place without having that state of emergency. That's my question. Yes, yes. At least one thing, you cannot quarantine people by order. If you not, do not have the state, of, the state of emergency, you cannot block people from coming in, something like that. You cannot postpone people from coming in Thai people from coming back to Thailand. So the state of emergency is that thing that they try to explain to us that they need to keep it because the ordinary law wouldn't allow them to do such things. But many Thais are not happy about, about this extending. They, they keep extending one month at a time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Uh, Caroline, Caroline Cooper, you've got your hand up. I'll just um, meet you there. Thank you. Hello, Caroline. Hey, hello, Charlie. Hi. Um, I'm very interested in the village health worker, the also more. Yes. Um, that sounds such a good idea, just going around and visiting schools and educating people in real, did you say one to 70 ratio or something? About that, yes. We have one million system. Five, yes, one million and four, forty thousand, forty-four, forty thousand of them. We have nothing like that. Such a good idea. How are they trained? They are not actually been trained in a school or anything. They've been trained on the job of the thing that we ask them to do. We ask them to measure blood pressure, so we train them to do the blood pressure by asking them to. Uh, uh, let's say a small hospital that is nearby and we give them the, the, the machine and then they will detect the blood pressure and put down the, uh, and, and write it down, something like that. And they have a so-called a, a um, telephone apps that connect them so we can uh, tell them something through the apps, educating them through the apps. This has been going on for many years, which is quite unique for Thailand. These people will get about 500 baht per month for their service. Mm -hmm. Were they used for SARS and MERS and those other things? Is it a long, an ongoing system? It's quite old. At that time, we didn't have many of the cases, so they, they were not coming into, into view because the, the cases were too low. Mm -hmm. But this is happening throughout Thailand, so everyone is alerted and we use them a lot. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Caroline. Um, we have a question from Adrian. Um, I've just unmuted you, Adrian. Thanks, Charlie. Um, Hi. Do you think that genetics plays any part in it, because the whole of the, the Mekong Basin has done relatively well compared to most of Europe has done relatively badly. Do you think that yeah. genetics has, has any part in that or not? Yes, it's, it's been said in the article 
talking about the um, <coughs> genetic. But if you look at Singapore, Singapore is also has a very same genetic as us. They have a lot of cases, things like that. So I don't think genetic make much of a of the factor that prevent us from having this low infection rate. But maybe the strain of the virus may be different in infectivity. That may be the reason that we are trying to look into. That's why we were saying that in the first place, we have the so-called Asian strain. But now the spreading of disease are the European or America, North America strain. So we don't want this strain to come to Thailand. That's why we, have, uh, we still have the strict uh, traveling restriction that uh, maybe Steve already asked about, that when we are going to open our country. So I think this is today that the government has put on a meeting and they are deciding for four groups of people that are allowed that will maybe allow to come to Thailand, like the group of people who come and shoot pictures, movies in Thailand, our neighboring uh, workers who can come, and the third one would be someone who come for a trade um, showing, or uh, the third one would be people who want to come and get medical treatment that uh, uh, somebody already said that we had a good reputation for doctors in Thailand. So those are the four groups of people that they were talking that will let be the first phase of group of people that we allow to come to Thailand. But they still have to be quarantined. If you come for treatment, you'll be quarantined in hospitals, things like that. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Um, Steve, you have a question? Yes, Dr. Tony, thank you for an excellent talk. I mean, um, it's clear that the whole country has got behind the virus and actually has been very receptive, which uh, the results speak for themselves. But just two points, and these, these are both on the economic side. What has the economic impact been on the country? Because, for example, I, I received a, an email a couple of days ago from, from Phuket, from a charity, which was showing people suffering hardship and would I contribute towards help, helping out? That's to me as an individual, not, not from the Anglo-Thai society. And, and, and one aspect which has become clear in the UK, with everybody becoming accustomed to working at home, it's becoming increasingly difficult or whether there's actually the need for everybody to go back to return to their normal working habits, to go back to their offices. Mm -hmm. But clearly, um, not very many people are, and I think how many people eventually do, um, it will be, remains to be seen. But are, are people in Bangkok, for example, are most people going back to their offices to work again, or are many people working, remaining working from home? Is, is, is normality beginning to come back? Are there as many people back on the streets as they used to be? Thank yes. Now, nowadays, it's quite normal now that people walk out on the street and they gather in a, in a restaurant. So what you were asking is a negative side of the good thing that we did in mm, Thailand. Exactly. Yes. If you control the disease like us, then we had a very bad impact on the economy. Mm. So Thailand will be the worst hit country in Asia about economy. That's a fact. Mm. So this is the balance that each government has to think about. The government of Thailand they thought about health and death, but the impact of that thing will we will see. We already see it now, and we will see more and more in the, in the near future. I'm saying that we are having a bad economy in Thailand. People are not just going back to work from the office or staying at home because many Thai people they are not working like that. There are people who had to go to the street and work on the street. They have mm. to sell things on the street. They have to do other mm. things. They are farmers. They, they have to drive motorcycle. They have to do things like that. So we are having a lot of impact on this downside mm. of the economy. But anyway, I just had a patient and I asked him, I said, in this three months, 
Did you have any income until he said none? But but the government had paid nearly everyone in Thailand five thousand baht per month for three months. Anyone who had impact had the impact because of not be able to go to work or out of job. So they give these people five thousand baht per month. And that man said to me, "If it's not because of that five thousand baht, I will be dying." But mm -hmm. that money already stopped because the government had only have that three months period that they have enough mm -hmm. money to pay for those people, and they just paid. I think yesterday. For another group of people who been left out from those groups, they were mm. the people who are disabled, something like that, children, elderly, something like that, three thousand baht a month. Mm. So the government is spending a lot of money without any income back. Mm. They spend this kind of money for people. They spend a lot of money on treating people for free, things like that. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Dr. Pizzanti. No, no, I, I, it, it's interesting. I mean, we, we're all facing a similar problem. It's about how we deal with it and how we look after everybody at the end of the day. Yes. But uh, yes. Thailand is clearly in a very good position. It's built up a, a very good platform for the, for the future on the health side. It's just now moving on to the economic phase, which is, which is, you, you can't ignore it. It's, it's, it's obviously there that we have to have to deal with that in our own way. But. But thank, mm -hmm. th thank you very much for talking for, for me and for the society for, for the talk you've given. And it's uh, extremely comprehensive, and I think we've all learned a lot about how Thailand has got, uh, Thailand's approach. It's been extremely effective, and, and now we have an even better understanding of, of Thailand's statistics because they, mm -hmm. they are, they are, they've been very well explained by yourself, and I'm very grateful for you for, for doing that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Do we have time for one more question? Because Suzette has her hand up. Is that okay? Uh, Suzette, I've just unmuted you if you'd like to ask your question. Oh, sorry, you might need to do it yourself, Suzette, if you've muted yourself. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. It was very interesting. Um, um, being from Singapore, the, the cases that you mentioned, the rise, they were basically from the immigrants of South Asian, um, Indian continent. So maybe uh, genetics might play a part, but you know, Dr. Pisanti, uh, I just want to say that it's just very great that uh, Thailand has uh, been such an example to everyone. But yeah, no, you know, maybe as you said, right in the beginning, you had three reasons and genetics was one of them and it might be, it might be so. Um, and that was basically all I wanted to say, but thank mm -hmm. you. I, I can add a little thing about genetics because I, I, I have, I believe in myself, I, I believe that genetic has nothing to do with this disease or any disease because mm -hmm. Thailand has all diseases in the world. We have HIV, we have herpes, we have everything diseases in the world. How can we just be genetically engineer for this COVID-19. So this is, I don't think this is the explanation. Sometimes we have this association, which is quite dramatic. Something has been said many times, uh, many months back. It said that any country who had tuberculosis and put a BCG vaccine for that people, then those countries will have less cases of COVID-19. And they put a very graphical association to see, to, to make clear that uh, Thailand, we have a um, BCG vaccine, so we have less cases. But finally, when the data show it now, then it's not true anymore. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's no more questions from the audience. So. Lovely. Well, i got just say a final farewell, Dr. Sandy. Thank, thank, thank you very much again. I think it's been a, a fascinating uh, talk, and I think we've all learned something. And actually, it's been very, very impressive how the country has has got together to tackle tackle this virus. And and uh, obviously, hope everything continues to go well. And 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 we thank we, you. We, I'm certainly speaking for myself, that we we can we can plan on visiting Thailand again. 
I'm looking very much looking forward to it. And perhaps when I'm there, I'll thank you in person for your talk. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Zondi. And I hope your daughter you. continues to prosper in the UK and you're receiving you. positive news back. Yes. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dr. Zondi. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Zondi. It's been a pleasure.